I'm in third grade, and I'm Grace. When you do those neat projects, that thing that's life altering, um, you know, what this does for you guys is a neat experience. What this potentially does for this family is life altering. Oh, I, I hope the project will help her gain confidence being around older students and um, as well um, enabling her to do a few things and not to mention um, just having, I think having students like you have exposure to um, somebody with uh, a disadvantage like that is helpful for you as yeah. well and to be able to be a part of helping her life be better. In the winter of 2014, the community of Penn High School worked with the Hildreth family to do something amazing. Teams of Penn students have worked tirelessly to make this project come to fruition. This is the story of how a group of young adults and their mentors were able to come together on one project, one that would go beyond classroom standards, one that would form a hand of grace. Like On January 20th, 2015, Mr. Josiah Parker and Mr. Jim Langfelt took a group of five engineering students to meet Grace and her family at Madison Elementary School. The group was able to sit down and talk with Grace's parents in order to get the background information they needed. This meeting allowed Grace's mother, Olivia Hildreth, to articulate her dreams for her daughter. Um, what happened was that I actually saw a documentary on the news, I think, to do with Enable, where a lot of children were, not a lot of children, but some kids were getting these 3D arms made. And I contacted the organization called Enable, and a, a website came up. And um, he said, I got an email back to say, look, just fill in these details. And because we're very limited with 3D printers, I'm going to have to try and match you up with someone. We don't have access to many 3D printers, so I'm going to have to try and match you up with someone close by. One day I was in a meeting here with Mr. Lensky, the principal, and I just shared what I'd actually found. I don't know how we got onto the subject, but I just shared, um, you know, did he know of anything or did he, had he heard about the project? Um, and he was just sharing that over at the high school he knew of a 3D printer. And, um, and then just a discussion out of that, that maybe Penn High School actually might be interested in printing off or doing something um, to produce an arm for Gracie. And indeed, they were eager to accept the challenge. What are you doing here today? Getting my arm done. Getting your arm done? Yeah. Um, so, uh, do you know why? So you guys can have a cake of it. Over the next few months, Grace came to Penn High School on multiple occasions, and with the help of Penn's sculpture teacher, Miss Beth McKechnie, several molds and plaster castings were made of Grace's little arm. I'm Olivia. Hi, Olivia. This is Gracie. Hi, Gracie. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Your hands are cold. We're going to stick it in some goofy stuff and get a little dirty and have fun. On her return visit, we met the rest of the family, Lucia and Sophia. Later that same day, Miss Amy Rice and a few of her sewing students came and took Grace's measurements in order to design and create a beautiful dress for Grace to wear at her movie premiere. We kind of asked her questions about like what kind of princess she likes, so we're going to combine um, Sleeping Beauty and Elsa and make her a dress for her to match that. Four of POE students and these two gentlemen uh, went out, out to Madison Elementary School and we met Gracie, who's a little girl here, and she is our client. While Grace was getting these castings done, the robotic students were hard at work. Mr. Langfelt and Mr. Parker presented the project to the rest of the class, and that set the wheels in motion. But I think the conductive, whether it's thread or paint or whatever, is a good idea. They researched and brainstormed different devices that would work for Grace. So maybe she could like close and not move her arm, and then move her arm and not close. Mock-ups were made of ideas, and students 3D printed an arm and assembled it to see how it worked. From there, they decided what was good, bad, and how they could use parts in a new design. However, as the project progressed, 
things didn't go as smoothly as before. It's going slow right now. Um, it's just all the waiting for materials, getting electronics, the money, the funding, that kind of stuff takes a while. Uh, design obviously takes a while, making sure how the heck do you get three joints of a finger designed onto a computer and to the point where you can print it off. Um, but it's going well. Every, every class has a design, has something they're going for. Uh, like I said, once we get things printed off, we can start testing them out and give them to Grace and see what she thinks about them. Um, right now we're almost finished with the arm. We're still waiting on uh, purchase order forms for the electronics and a couple other materials. And then we've been having a lot of problems trying to make a, uh, a rubber insert to fit between the fingers. And we've been trying to find the right material, but we can't. But we still have a couple areas where it's very slow, which is making the whole project go slower than it should. Even through tough setbacks, the students and teachers persevered. This was project-based learning at its finest. The answers were out there, but they would not be found in a textbook. Most of them seem to really enjoy it. Um, it there's not really a set curriculum for this or a set of instructions or anything like that. So a lot of it's just what comes next and seeing what comes next because of what came before. Um, so that part makes it a little more difficult for planning wise, but as far as the students are concerned, I think they're enjoying it. For the hand, the next step would be to assemble our first version of a hand, um, do some testing ourselves that we can do here in the lab and then physically give it to Grace or put it on, see how it fits, see how it feels, have her use it, um, give us feedback on it as we're working on a version two or a version three even of it. It's a big day, you to get your arm. And uh, I guess, so before you go through the whole kind of last day of getting the arm and seeing your dress and all that, uh, I guess what's, uh, what's the whole journey kind of been like? It's been, I must say it's been exciting. We've just really uh, enjoyed the whole process. Um, getting to know more about our community, I guess, and the school community. Um, feeling a sense of being supported and um, just excited at the opportunity for Gracie. In the spring of 2015, the project reached its climax. After weeks of work and testing, both Grace's arm and dress were complete and ready to be presented. Are you excited? Mm -hmm. Grace contained her joy as she wore her dress with pride. However, the experience had not been fulfilled, as she would soon be heading to the robotics lab to receive her new arm. We have these kids over here that have been building it, and we're gonna, we're gonna try it on, make sure it fits, and then we're gonna actually make it work. You ready? You ready? Gracie Marie? You ready to see this thing? Yeah? <laughs> I gotta pull the cover off. Okay. Like the 2014-2015 academic year, the product is now arriving at its finished state. It will work, but not flawlessly. It may be a little bigger than she'd like. It may prove a little heavier than she can manage. One consolation is that Grace has many years before she gets to high school in the Penn community. Meanwhile, the Penn engineering classes will continue to refine their designs and their teachers will continue to collaborate on how to use technology to serve humankind. That service does not end with one product. Instead, it takes the students back to the drawing board again and again until those students find the best possible solution. And Grace gets the best possible product, and in that work, both find the hand of Grace.